Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what myoclonic epilepsy is, genetic causes of myoclonic epilepsy, infectious causes, what juvenile myoclonic epilepsy is, what progressive myoclonic epilepsy is, treatment options, and non-medicinal treatment. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link at the top of our channel and donate today. Your donation helps us to make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. Myoclonic epilepsy is a generalized epilepsy where all parts of the brain show abnormal electrical activities. The result is short, rapid and uncontrollable muscle jerks and rhythmic contractions resulting in problems when it comes to normal activities. Generalized epilepsy is diagnosed when abnormal activity stems from both hemispheres of the brain. If abnormal activity comes from only one part of the brain, then it is focalized. There are two types of myoclonic epilepsy juvenile monoclonic epilepsy, and progressive myoclonic epilepsy. Genetic causes occur due to a change in the DNA sequence in cells. Parts of an organism's DNA encodes for proteins and special enzymes. When there is a mutation or disruption to the DNA sequence, the translated protein will be abnormal. Inherited gene changes happen when a person inherits the effective gene from their parents. Examples are autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and X-linked. Myoclonic epilepsy can be caused by several gene mutations. Two of the most studied are GABRA1 and EFHC1 gene. Mutations in the GABRA1 gene leads to juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, starting in childhood to adolescent age. The mutation is due to changes in a single protein block in the A1 subunit. Mutations in the EFHC1 gene also leads to juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, starting in childhood and adolescent age. Researchers have found that a decrease in EFHC1 protein function reduces apoptosis, resulting in more neurons than normal, disrupting calcium homostasis. The changes lead to overstimulation of the neurons, resulting in seizure activity. One example of an infectious cause is malaria. Malaria is a blood disease caused by the plasmodium parasite infecting humans through the mosquito vector. Malaria through the red blood cells makes its way to the brain, where it is then called cerebral malaria, which can result in seizures and other neurological disorders. Malaria can also cause high fevers, which can trigger seizures. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy is a type of generalized epilepsy with myoclonic generalized tonic-clonic, and absent seizures. Juvenile myoclonic epilepsy occurs in 5 to 11 percent of all epilepsies, accounting for both males and females. According to the article, Juvenile Myoclonic Epilepsy, Underappreciated and Underdiagnosed, the authors state, 80 percent of patients with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy begin having seizures between ages 12 and 18 with a mean age of onset of 14.6 years. The mean age of onset for generalized tonic-clonic seizures is 15.5 years, absent seizures 11.5 years, and myoclonic seizures 15.4 years. Earlier onset is seen in photosensitive patients. Absent seizures typically begin between ages 5 and 16 years. Myoclonic jerks follow between 1 and 9 years later, followed by generalized tonic-clonic seizures a few months later. Approximately 3 to 8 percent of childhood absent epilepsies evolve into juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. Progressive myoclonic epilepsy is defined 
is a group of uncommon clinically and genetically heterogeneous disorders characterized by monoclonus, generalized epilepsy, and progressive neurological deterioration, including dementia and ataxia. Progressive myoclonic epilepsy has many subtypes, such as unverricht lundberg disease. Ataxia is a neurological disorder of the brain affecting the cerebrum and impaired balance, which is also a symptom in unverricht lundberg disease. Progressive myoclonic epilepsy has an onset during infancy, childhood, and adulthood, but late childhood and adolescence is more common. Treatment options for myoclonic epilepsy include the following, Velproid, Lamotrigine, and Levetiracetam. Velproid was the only drug used against generalized and focal epilepsies until the 1990s, Velproid is usually used as a first choice when treating myoclonic epilepsy. Lamotrigine is a choice considered better for women, especially of childbearing age, who are trying to conceive or are considering. Levetiracetam has been shown to be effective in controlling generalized tonic-clonic seizures and myoclonic seizures. Non-medicinal approaches to controlling myoclonic epilepsy are regulating one's sleep cycle, reducing or eliminating intake of alcohol, and the keto diet. In conclusion, myoclonic epilepsy is a generalized epilepsy where all parts of the brain show abnormal electrical activities. The result is short, rapid, and uncontrollable muscle jerks and rhythmic contractions, resulting in problems when it comes to normal activities. To prevent misdiagnosis and underappreciation of myoclonic epilepsy, primary doctors, psychiatrists, and clinical personnel need to undergo more training in figuring out distinct signs and symptoms. Patients need to feel comfortable regarding their disorders and medical problems and be willing to share changes so that better treatment and diagnosis can be given. To learn more about myoclonic epilepsy, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on our social media pages. Subscribe to our bi-weekly newsletter for our latest articles and more information. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.